Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the predicted Stephen Kenny's first squad. I know next Monday is going to be basically announcing his provisional squad. So it won't actually be the 23-man squad. So this is more of a 23-man squad. That's likely to be a case with a kind of twist of what I would like to see at the same time. And kind of take it into consideration who might be playing, who kind of might have a club by then that type of thing because at the moment some players are still in lingo like jeff hendrick and stuff like this is the time i'm making the video anyway um and kieran o'hara and stuff like that but we'll get into it so i won't give away too much but the three goalkeepers i've gone with are the three that have been uh the three goalkeepers during mick mccarthy's i suppose reign where you had darren randolph mark travers and kieran o'hara i think darren randolph without doubt is ireland's number one and regardless of how he starts the season with West Ham, I think he has to be the one playing in goal for us. He brings such a calmness to the defence, and he's just he's, he's experienced in big nights and big games. And we're gonna, I know the Nations League aren't the huge games, but they are a build up to our big game, our big playoff against Slovakia, of course. So I think you're gonna need Darren there as the number one. I think you know. I don't think he's going to be taking out number one spot anytime soon. But there is a case to be made if Mark Travers starts the season strongly. Um, he could be in serious contention at Bournemouth for a spot in the Irish national team if he's doing really well at championship level. It looks like Ramsdale is joining Sheffield United. So that could open doors for Mark and he could be the number one there at Bournemouth, Bournemouth sorry, which I think could be huge for him. And if he is to start the season strongly and well, who's to say by the end of the season he wouldn't be Ireland's number one um, if Darren's not playing at West Ham by then. But look, for the time being, I think Darren is going to be um, our number one or number 23 if you're at it, whatever way you want to look at it. But I think Travers could be pushing him closely if he is getting game time at Bournemouth. And Kieran Hara is just without a club at the moment of filming this as well. And until anyone I see kind of stepping up like Kelleher or something like that, I think Stephen Kenny would actually see him as more beneficial to the 21s. So I think, I don't think that he would actually be looking really to take him. If he's just going to be another number, I think he'd be happy enough having Kieran O'Hara there just as the third goalkeeper in the squad because you have to have the two goalkeepers in the squad, um, two extra ones. So I think that's why O'Hara would get in there. I'm not saying he's a bad keeper or anything like that. I do think he's a good keeper. I think he can get a good club and hopefully by the time we actually are back playing international games that he'll get a look in or maybe he can do well in one of the Nations League games and get a club that way. Who knows? But it'd be interesting to see how he gets on and um that's the reason why i've gone with those three goalkeepers i still think bazuna is quite young still has to make a name for himself i know kelleher and bazuna are training with man city and liverpool squads but they're not playing um and i just think they'd be better off in it with the 21s right now at this current moment in time but i'm going to get on to the defenders then and the defenders that i've gone with firstly seamus coleman he's our captain stephen kenny you know, rang him first above anyone else. Um, he sees him as the captain as well. And I think, he again, we're kind of in a little bit of a transition period here where a lot of young players are going to be coming in and integrating. And I've done some interviews with players during the lockdown. They spoke about how Seamus Coleman was brilliant with them and he just brought them in, sat them down and, you know, put the arm around them, which is exactly what we need. And, you know, Seamus is such a great role model and, and ambassador and he's still playing in the Premier League. He's still playing with Everton. He's still Everton's captain. So, I, as, as like, I still don't see how you can leave him out of the squad. Maybe out of the starting 11 if you're going to play Matt Doherty as a right back. Um, But, you know, if you're going to have an Ireland squad, you have to have Seamus Coleman in there. And I think Stephen Kenny will find a way to probably fit Matt Doherty and Seamus Coleman in, which brings me to Matt Doherty, who's probably the highest performing right wing back um, other than maybe Trent Alexander Arnold in in Europe, I think um, maybe I'm a little bit biased in saying that, but he's definitely one of the well, well, maybe in the Premier League, but not in Europe. Then okay, so, um, but Matt Doherty's been fantastic the last two seasons for Wolves, and if we can find a way to slot him in, a lot of people talking about a three five two with uh, Doherty as a right wing back and Seamus as the right sided centre back, which again could work. But look, it's exciting because it, it's a, it's looking at a manager who may try to get the two players into the team, which is what a lot of Ireland fans would like to see. I think we're a better team with the two of them playing. I think Seamus is very good defensively. I think 
Matt is very good offensively. So I mean, if you can, if you can get the two of them in there, that's a healthy balance, I think. And then on the left side, you've got I've gone with uh, Enda Stevens and Ryan Manning. Enda Stevens no needs no introduction at all. He's been absolutely outstanding this season for Sheffield United. You know, his, his debut season in the Premier League. Um, he has fantastic stats from this season as well. Um, and he rarely misses a game. I think he, I think he played in all the games. He came come off injured in one game. Um, just before we were meant to play the playoffs in March, I think he came off in that game. But he played every other game, started every other game, and finished the season strongly with Sheffield United as well. Um, so I think Ender fully fit is our number one left back without doubt. Ryan Manning had such a good season at left back for QPR and chipping in with goals and assists. And I think he's well. I think I I think he has to be considered uh, very highly in this case um, at left back because. I know he was like a, a forward. He's a kind of a makeshift left back, but he's been he's been brilliant in that position for QPR. Um, when you look past Ender Stevens, it's kind of hard to find anyone within, uh, you know, that age bracket that will fill that gap. And I think Ryan Manning could be the one who, if anything happens to Ender, that Ryan can step in and do well. Um, I think I think he has shown signs that he can go a level above. Um, QPR, I think he'll, I think he'll go somewhere else. He's been linked with Premier League clubs. I know West Ham been in from. He may, may well sign for West Ham before the squads and the full squads announced. Anyway, so like these are like the four names I've already mentioned are absolutely quality. If you look at what what they've done this season, um, Seamus probably had the worst season out of the lot, but still. You know, that's that's a collective thing. I think Seamus personally hasn't had a bad season himself. I mean he's been very good for Everton defensively. I know that from being an Everton fan and watching him. Um probably he's been let down by the, by his teammates and stuff like that. But anyway, um then the, the four centre backs that I've gone with are Shane Duffy, who at this point in time it looks like he's odds on for West Brom, but at the same time he could still go to Celtic and if he's playing regular football, Shane Duffy has to be easily one of the first name names on the team sheet. And then John Egan. I mean, what 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 do you say about John Egan? He's just been absolutely class this season, and um, you know, had a lot of heartbreak to get to where he is now. And it's great to see him getting the fruits of you know being number number one choice at international level. Probably benefited a little bit from Richard Kyo's injuries and stuff like that with the car crash and stuff like that. But look, um Egan's taken his chance and and, he, and this season in the Premier League he's been outstanding. One of the best centre backs in the Premier League and again uh, uh, Duffy and Egan centre back fills me with absolute confidence and then behind them as as subs I have Darrow O'Shea at West Brom with just one young player of the year. I just did an interview with him there. Um he seems to be quite focused on the twenty ones right now, but I think that's just the case of he's i just didn't think he wants to put any sort of um expectancy on the fact that if he does if he wants to get called up and then doesn't i don't think he wants to deal with the the low of that so i think he's just kind of putting all his focus in the 21s but if he starts like he did finish the season with west Brom, is absolutely no question why he can't be in there um you know in the squad at, at the very least he looks like he's going to go on to big things and Slavin Bilic and Stephen Kenny have spoken very very highly about him obviously Stephen's work with the under 21s and is a big fan of his I think he made him captain as well for a few games when Jason Malumbi wasn't there so look it, it shows that he has a lot of faith in him and then the other centre back is Kevin Long who again finished the season really strongly with Burnley and hopefully now that he will get start getting you know more game time with Burnley and playing regularly in the Premier League, I mean, he's shown that he can, he can do it in the top level. But I suppose he hasn't been given always that much game time. So when he came in, he's always looked solid. When he's played for Ireland, he's looked solid. He's always come in and done a shift. But I'd like to see him now kick on a little bit. He's been up there only ten years or something like that. Um, he's our longest serving player, but he spends most of his time on the bench. So I don't know what that's all about. It's a bit of a weird scenario, but I think I'd have him in there just for experience and the fact that he's used to coming in and filling in if needs be. Um, Kieran Clark, I still believe is injured, and if he wasn't, I would have him in the squad absolutely. Um, he's he's yeah, he's probably right up there with Duffy and Egan as um as our best centre backs. To be honest, uh, I don't I don't see too much between the three of them. To be honest. But he just misses out on this occasion. I mean, if he's fit, happy days get him back in there. But I'm just going by at the moment. But then, if you're kind of moving on then to midfield, the midfield I've gone with are Howerhin, Hendrick, Malumbi, J- Jack Byrne and James McCarthy. I think Howerhin finished the season strongly at Villa. If he's given a chance, um, I think he'd work better 
under a team that's playing with the ball i think he can orchestrate things if he's, if he's allowed to get on the ball and make things happen hendrick i think you'll see a new hendrick under stephen kenny it also depends on what club he ends up joining there's a lot of talk uh, joining newcastle at the moment so if he joins them you know let's see what he can do but i want him to be playing in a team where he plays midfield plays that as that attacking midfielder and let's see if he can have a good season in the premier league he's well overdue uh, you know a season in midfield in the premier league um and is he going to stay in the Premier League? Because it's thought him going to Serie A, Roma, and uh, AC Milan linked to him, and he got Man United, and all these teams linked to him. We're coming into a summer; it's very, very strange scenarios because you have the coronavirus and people not willing to pay prices for players. So you can get an international player for free. A lot of teams are looking at that at the moment. So I think Jeff has to pick the best option for him football-wise and financially because, as I say, football is a very short career in that sense. And I believe that players need to make the right moves for themselves as well financially. Uh, Jason Malumbi, be interested to see how he starts off the season. Will he get in the first team at Brighton? Will he be playing games? And if he is, without question, has to be in the squad. Uh, Jack Byrne, again, uh, started the season back since the since lockdown with uh, Shamrock Rovers has been absolutely excellent. I think he would give us that something extra, a little bit further up the pitch. And I think Stephen Kenny wouldn't be afraid to put a League of Ireland player in his squad. And look, last time we played Bulgaria, Jack came on and um, helped, helped uh, Ed Stevens assist with a goal. And he got, I think he got an assist as well for, for Kevin Long's header, the corner whipped in. Jack came on and looked really well there against uh, New Zealand as well. So he's shown that he can he can do it when he needs to as well. And then James McCarthy, I think without doubt, um, our best sitting midfielder. And if he's in form and playing for Crystal Palace, it's looking like he, he might move as well. Other clubs have been linked to him. But if he can get in and uh, get a run together in the games again and finish the season like he did with uh, sorry Crystal Palace, then... Um, absolutely without question should be in that squad um and then i'm going with the forwards and these include wide players so if you're thinking that i wasn't including the likes of mclean and that and robbie brady in the midfield they're in the forwards i kind of have a, a, an inkling that stephen kenny will use them as kind of further up the field forward wide men so i've gone with callum robinson aaron Connolly, james mclean michael obafemi robbie brady dave mcgoldrick and troy Parrish. and now i'm going to go through them all individually why i've chosen them and there's some players obviously there that have missed out. But I think Callum Robinson, he finished the season strongly at West Brom, got them promoted. It's going to be see, interesting to see, will he stay at Sheffield United? Will he join? Will he go to the Championship? Join the club there? Will West Brom take a gamble and sign him? Who knows? So it'll be interesting to see what he ends up doing. If he's playing first in football, I believe he should be in there. I think he gives us something different. I would like to see him maybe down the middle. Um, He's shown he can be a bit of a nuisance for West Brom down the middle so i think steve might give him an option there he's been kind of used as a makeshift player he's been used as a number 10 at times he's been used a wide right wide left and i just think if you can find an, a, a position that helps him out i think you could see a, a really good player there uh, aaron Connolly, um obviously finished last day of the season with a goal for brighton he'll be hoping to get straight back into it now once the season starts he'll be looking to get uh, hungry for goals again and you know i think aaron can play in a number of different positions and i think stephen kenny has worked with him he he'll know how to get the best out of him i think aaron's firing on all cylinders he has to be in that squad and we need pace up front as well let's not forget we've had too much time where we had slow players the ball not getting up and you get the ball going up long to, to slow players and they just haven't been able to do anything whereas if we can get quick players on the ball runners in behind we can scare teams and, and, and push them back rather than them pushing us back the whole time. We've got James McLean in there. He won Stoke City's Player of the Year. Finished the season, especially in lockdown, helped them get out of that relegation battle. And it's been absolutely fantastic. And it's great to see him kind of turn things around and, you know, be in the headlines for the right reasons rather than the wrong reasons. And that those headlines necessarily aren't his fault. Um. So I think... Yeah, I think McLean is there on merit this time around, um, not loyalty from, say, Mick McCarthy or, or, or Martin O'Neill. So, look, I think, as I say, James is there on merit. Stephen Kenny's worked with him before. I think, he'll, I think he'll see uh, James perform a lot better for Ireland under Stephen as well, I'm hoping. Um, yeah, 
So James McLean's in there as well. Then you got Michael Obafemi again. A couple of substitute appearances for, for Southampton seems to be really good off the bench. I think he could be a good option for Ireland off the bench as well. Teams are getting tired. You have him coming in, running at you. Um, he's a live wire. He's active around the box. Um, scores against big teams as well. So um, he doesn't seem to be faced by the big occasion. And that's why I've gone with Michael Obafemi over Shane Long here. Um, and it's because I want to have the kind of bit of a mix of blend and I kind of get through the last couple of players and explain more Gone Robbie Brady again we're kind of lacking something on the right hand side I think if we have him in there and he's playing for Burnley and getting some games in between now and then I think he has to be in the squad he adds that little bit of quality and um, yeah we kind of need someone who can play on the right hand side and cut in and do well and, and Robbie obviously can do that and we all know that by now uh, David McGoldrick again did see if he finishes the season or sorry if he starts the season like he finished it or Sheffield United I think we sh we've seen more so with the lockdown we were able to get watch games more so and you could see what McGoldrick brings to that Sheffield United team and exactly what Ireland needed someone when we're under the cautious to take the ball up the other end of the pitch make it stick take pressure off the defence and get bodies up forward up with him and if he has like Aaron Connolly or Michael Obafemi or whoever beside him and he's playing balls into them and getting them in behind and they're all making transitions I think we're on a really exciting side and I think that's why Shane Long just misses out because if you're going to have one kind of older player I think it has to be McGoldrick because I think he just gives us that something different and I think if you're looking at Shane Long he's a runner he's quick he gets in behind I think we've younger players that can do that Um, you know if something happens between or to one of the players between now and then I would definitely have Shane Long in there because of his experience Um, but at this present moment and then the last player is Troy Parrott is just going on loan with Millwall and if he is getting game time with Millwall and I think in some cases Adam Ede is a little bit unlucky to miss out but I just think that because Troy has played with Ireland he has you know he played that uh, friendly with New Zealand he's been in the squad so he kind of has that little bit of experience now he's obviously worked with Steve and Steve is a big fan of his so I think having those players in there around him I think will help him settle he's got you know Connolly Malumbi Darrow Shea if they're in the squad with him they'll help him um, settle although he's, he would have already worked with all the players from the previous um, when the Denmark squad he was in that as well so and there's Jack Burns in there as well I think that'll just easily help him settle I think you could see a really really mature more mature Troy Parra come these games if he is to be picked and I think who knows he could even get in and be starting but, I mean, there's a really good blend of youth and experience in that squad that I've picked there. And I don't know if that's actually going to be this squad. Like, no one really does. But I think that's a fairly even squad. And I probably missed out on a couple of players, and I appreciate that. Um, but that's just my 23 if we're going by fully fit. And right now, um, that would be the 23 I would choose. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.